Wake up. Give your horse a drink. Hey, Boychin. Your horse knows his way home. How about you? Hey, wake up. Sally. Sally. Oh, my God, he's dead. Sally's dead! Get an ambulance, somebody. Get an ambulance. What the hell happened? Give me what the hell? The customer bought it too! Very artful, Seymour. Handsome cab driver had to go. Take out a passenger, the driver always joins him. It's a good rule. My customer, Mr. Moretti, who was he? A friend. Driver, could you turn up the radio? I'd like to listen to the inauguration. They're all thieves. Would you please? By Senator Lawrence Brockton, chairman of the Joint Congressional Committee. Moving toward their seats are President-elect and Mrs. Donald C. Martian, and following them are the Vice President-elect Adam J. Warner and Mrs. Warner, along with their families. I adore you. You're a magical person. Some of it has rubbed off on a very Grateful. I still say they're thieves, like everything else. The Chief Justice of the United States, Alan P. Sykes, is moving towards the podium. He wears the traditional robes and holds the Bible. It's over, Adam. No. I love you, but go home. You have a wife, a child on the way, and an extraordinary... It means nothing. It meant nothing. This conversation wouldn't be taking place. You know what that baloney cost the taxpayers? I now present the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, the Honorable Alan P. Sykes. He'll swear in on the Old Testament, the New Testament, and throw in his mother's grave, and still pick a spoon. They're hustlers, all of them. Not all. Yeah, who? Who? Don't tell me you trust those guys. I trust the Vice President. Sounds like he's a friend of yours. I know him once. A long time ago. Joshua's our son, isn't he? He's my son. You were merely the father. I need to know about my son. You never told me. Why? I was not about to tear you in two. I would have ended up with a lesser part. Everyone's got a car! That I take this obligation freely, without reservation. I take this obligation freely without reservation of purpose. Duties of the office. Has he been sworn in yet? Just about, Miss Parker. So help me God. God bless you, Adam. You look great. Bye. Hey, Joshua, big doings on TV. Lots of celebrities. Want to watch? Hate speeches. They're all stupid. Good thing his father didn't hear him say that. Collaborating on a glorious day. Always historic. Always touching. Well, perhaps I'm hopelessly out of date, Miss Parker. But I can't understand the value of a father knowing nothing about his own son. Yeah. He knows the boy is his. There's no responsibility there. Please, Mrs. Mackey, it's difficult enough. I've worked all over, Miss Parker. You're raising him brilliantly. As an adopted child, not my own. 
there's the lie. I can never compensate for that. something to drink? No. Jim, this is our colleague, Mrs. Jerome Worth. Jerry, this is Mrs. Yeah, Jim... Yeah, already around. Who's that? This is Mr. Seymour Bourne. No Seymours. Excuse us, Seymour. Jerome Worth and Company make up about 25% of our business. He is very special to us, Jim. Oh, well, he's special, all right. Insurance, banks, shipping, narcotics. Five times removed. And, of course, laundry. My God, you do great laundry. Shut him up, Thomas. No offense. So, Thomas, I'm still here. Worth and Company are being investigated by the Justice Department. Very aggressively. There could be an indictment. Stupid to let it get that bad. Stupid. Thomas, why is this 10 cent hood still alive? Because, sir, your kind of manicured hustler can't make it on his own. Jim, you fool with Jerry Worth, you fool with me. Don't. Now, gentlemen, there is, as we know, a new administration coming in. The new Deputy Attorney General, Arlen Haber, will decide whether they'll move to indict Jerry Worth or not. If he says no, it's no, and that's it. And who's going to make him say no? Well, according to Jim, the new Vice President will take care of that. Thomas, this is the real world. No one can reach Adam Warner. He's not only honest, he's rich. Yeah, he's rich. His honesty, it's none of my business. His private life is. I don't care what you have on him. As long as it convinces Warner to lean on his good friend, Arlen Haber. Arlen Haber wouldn't prosecute John Wilkes Booth if Warner told him not to. And will he tell him not to? If Jennifer Parker tells Warner not to. I'm leaving now. Remember, Tony. James. James Moretti. Yeah. Remember, Rocco. I go down, everybody goes. Understand? Kabish. Seguiranno, sono vice presidente eletto signor Adam Warner e signora Warner insieme Adam con Warner. la sua famiglia. What a farce! Nel <laughs> cielo chiaro, Carlo! Carlo! Sì, signora la Marchesa. Carlo, il televisore, per favore. Voglio vedere lo spettacolo. Scusa, Marchesa, non c'è di fare, sta qualcosa con la recezione. <laughs> Italian television, 20 years and I still can't get the picture to stay put. You must be very frustrated. Come sit here with me, Boise. With great pleasure, Marchesa. <laughs> you watch a nothing, you get nothing. Yeah. Inaugurations, what a circus. You've caught 15 minutes for verming, pal, and then that's it. Look at this, Mom. Look! I 
look. Come on now. Don't forget. Whoops. Mm. Ah. Want to see Father Ryan before I go to bed? Why does he have to go away? He's only going to Rome, sweetheart. Remember we talked about it? He'll be back. I hate people going away. You don't know whether they're ever coming back. the schedule, Phil? Yeah, it won't be late. This one is unique. As far as I'm concerned, they're all unique. Bodies are bodies. I haven't lost the knack, Mrs. Mackey. Your cooking remains plain and fattening. Father Ryan, your compliments are still not charitable. Father Ryan's a priest, not a diplomat. Uh huh. And he'd probably put on 15 pounds in Rome. Mm, I intend to. You think a priest goes to Rome for spiritual growth? <sighs> Jennifer, you're a good friend. If a priest can have a home life, you've given me one. Well, it's nice to have a resident priest here, Francis. Absolves our sins before we make them. Sorry, Jennifer. I can't make that deal. It's only a resume. Jeremy Simmons. You need an associate. Your cup of cases runneth over. I'm going to kill you. Not before Rome, Jennifer, please. Not before Rome. <sighs> Jennifer, Jeremy Simmons is very able and deeply troubled. And he was damn near disbarred. He disappeared from a case the morning he was due to sum up. He was looking for his wife. She's destroying him. Maybe she's impossible. Maybe he is. That's their problem. Jennifer, give the man a chance. Among the most sought after tickets for tonight's festivities, popping out all of its social circles of Washington. Look at Warner. The wife. The royal family. Surrounded by all the money, power, and grace you can hustle into one room. And I'll fall down. I like blackmail, Mr. Moretti. For a guy like me, it's a day off. No dead eyes, no final prayers, no begging, no cleaning up. It's the part I hate, cleaning up. You end up a maid. I'll try to keep it clean for you, Seaworm. No promises, there may be some cleaning up to do. Blackmail? Mr. Moretti, no one dies. It's all right, Michael. We'll let Warner dance for a while. We'll stroke the Parker lady for a time. What about the deal with Colfax? Worth. We'll make them both very happy, gentlemen. Surrey Worth will be bigger than ever. Then we'll deal with family matters. Vice President created the excitement that's happening now. And of course, no small part of that is due to the personality and influence of Mrs. Warner. Well known in social and political circles since her coming out party in 1974, the new second lady of the land is said by many observers to have her eye on the White House itself. For her husband, of course. Some say she's more ambitious than Adam Warner. That remains to be seen. But tonight, all eyes are on the flawless performances of the Vice President and his radiant wife.
Welcome to your new home. That'll be all, thank you. And nothing more this evening, thank you. Oh, it's all so beautiful. Thank you, Adam. With the new vice president, like a scotch and soda. Not too much soda. It occurs to me, Mary Beth, that you're good at this. At what? Coronations, inaugurations, wedding nights. You're just an expert in success, Mary Beth, an authentic winner. If Marie Antoinette had your brains, this would be a royal palace, and there'd be no need for revolution or democracy. Poverty and injustice would be irrelevant in your reign. You'd still be required, Adam. Without you, nothing works. Ah, but there is me, Mary Beth. There is me because of you. Without you, I might be protesting out there with torn jeans and ketchup-stained pamphlets. Without you, I might be living a life of futile exhaustion. Without you... Without me, it might be a hell of a lot happier. But that kind of happiness, darling, comes with a fearful price. What price? Obscurity. But that's not for my Adam. Hmm? Is it, darling? Mm. I know. You're restless, moody, and desperately nostalgic. But it'll fade away. It will. You will tune out that last distracting whisper of your fervent years. <laughs> so this is it. Heaven does charge. There will be no scandal. No affairs for me or you. Therefore, old husband, you have the deal of the century. No love to interfere with sex. No love to confuse you. No bed to interfere with dreams. And so, Mr. Vice President, here I am. The only game in town. Mary Beth, what? What's wrong? Wrong? <laughs> what could be wrong in this royal boudoir? Wrong? There's nothing wrong. Well, perhaps something. Tell me. You still talk in your sleep, Adam. And tonight the subject was Jennifer. Jennifer? Jennifer Parker. You brought her here tonight. You chose this occasion to bring her into our house. You brought Jennifer Parker into our bed. You didn't sleep with me tonight. You slept with her. You brought a whore to our sheets. You're wrong, Mary Beth. You're wrong. Wrong about what? Whether Parker's a whore or whether you brought her here. Stop for a moment, okay, fellas? Hello? Hello, Jennifer. Sorry to wake you. I know it's late. <laughs> Did you watch the inauguration? Yes, I saw you. It was very, I mean, very colorful. Why, Adam? Why tonight? Why after all these years? There were no years, only you. It occurred to me somewhere between all those cheers and all that pageantry that I was going to grow old quite badly without you. 
that I... Even after all these years, I... you can still make me cry. Jennifer Parker, attorney at law. She's on the phone right now. Can I take a message? She'll get back to you as soon as she's free. Jennifer Parker? I'm sorry, Mr. Griffith. She's on the phone. I think so. We'll get back to you. I'm Jeremy Simmons. I have an appointment with Miss Parker. Not enjoying today, not enjoying it at all. Cancel the rest of it. Yeah. You have three appointments today. A preliminary hearing. And Deke Farmer called from Washington three times. He's with Hatcher Foreman Delaphon. If God needed a lawyer, that's the firm. God couldn't afford them. You're Jeremy Simmons. OK, let's see what Ryan sees in you. The problem, Mr. Simmons, is not your time. I suppose you want to hear about it. If you want to tell me about it. I never showed up for my own summation. My client lost the case, and he shouldn't have lost the case. But you're a wunderkind. A wunderkind uh, who became a not-so-wonderful adult. All canceled. I keep them to remind me of better days. Days when doormen were tall and all maids slept in. And where is this uh, terrible wife you claim? I claim nothing. And my wife's whereabouts are irrelevant. Father Ryan uh, said that he thought you might need an associate. Are you willing to tell me why I should hire you? Are you willing to forget what you've heard about Catherine and myself? Is it enough to tell you that uh, my role as victimized husband was written by friends? I'm a good lawyer, Miss Parker. I I'm, could even be a bargain. Shrewd people do buy uh, damaged goods. You can get years of use out of damaged goods. I don't think you're damaged goods at all. But you probably are a bargain. You're hired. Want to know what you're going to start on? Oh, I haven't a clue. A child molestation case. Whose side are we on? The alleged molester. Oh, I want to raise. It's okay, Jennifer. It's just me. How did you know I... You had me followed, Adam? Oh, be careful, please. Just today, Jennifer. I... wanted to see you. You still coming down here? When things get muddled, I... I buy a sandwich and come here. Are things muddled? They have been since you called. And before? I cope. Well, 
this is still the loneliest place I know. You used to say, only people like lonely places. And you're still astonishingly beautiful. Please, don't hurt me. Never. Jennifer Parker. You were at the inauguration, you know. You marched with the bands, you danced at all the balls. You were in every scene, you stole the show. You're not in my life anymore, Adam. But you were in mine. Jennifer. I still love you. Go home. Go. Go be a great man, good husband. A loving father to your little girl. And our boy? Oh, please, Adam. I want to see Joshua. Don't hurt him. He's innocent. So were you, damn it. So were you. In love, yes. Innocent, no. Joshua still? Oh, he's fine. He's in his room playing with his new cars. Oh, Miss Parker, this is Dennis Callahan, the son of an old school chum. Now departed. Mrs. Mackey's been kind enough to help me get started in the United States. I'm from Cork. Just got off the boat. It was a plane. <laughs> I've been telling Dennis that it's not all that easy in New York, but he's willing. Mm, no job too small, no salary too big. Mrs. Mackey's been telling me what a wonderful barrister you are. Lawyer in the States. And not all that wonderful. Mrs. Mackey's been telling me. I hope Mrs. Mackey hasn't been boring you with uh, family matters. Oh, nothing like that. I think I've taken too much of your time. Oh, no, no. Stay where you are, Mr. Callahan. I have some calls to make. Oh, Miss Parker, your office called to remind you that lunch with Deke Farmer is confirmed for tomorrow. And Mr. Simmons called. The hearing on the Glenn Morris case is set for Thursday. Ken Morris. Isn't that the child molestation case? Miss Parker, surely you're not going to... The man's entitled to a lawyer. But people like that... Are people. Visit us again, Mr. Callahan. I would really like that. I feel almost family around here. So, welcome to New York. Isn't she nice, though? Old salmon would be nice, and the lady will have the veal piccata. And with the salad, uh, Roquefort or and vinegar? Is that all right with you? Yes, fine. Oil and vinegar, Andre. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. If you ever want to rattle the imperturbable Andre, just call him Andrew. He'll drop his menus and composure all over the restaurant. Now, why would I do that? Because Andrew is his real name, Andrew Belkin. <laughs> the firm wants you. Why? Why? What do you mean, why? Mr. Farmer, the firm of Hatcher, Foreman, and Delafont is as big as you can get. You've sent one partner to the United States Supreme Court. You've given the country an attorney general, secretary of the treasury. Uh, we don't talk about him. So, how about it? You could go all the way. Margaret Delafont is desperate to have you. As I said before, why? She thinks you're brilliant. And she wants to center the firm. Center the firm? More balance. More women, more ethnics, more non-establishment types. No. 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 I have a nice practice. And I have freedom. I'm doing fine. Well, you are doing fine. 
But it is no crime to take on the big ones, the ones that go into the books we lawyers study and use. The cases that expand the law, that expand the thought. Miss hmm. Parker, if you don't want to get rich, that's your problem. But if you don't want to use yourself to the fullest, that's everyone else's problem. I could get fired for losing you. <sighs> then have Margot Delafont call me. I'll cover for you. I won't tell her how you botched it. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh like a chicken. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I don't believe anyone asked you to sit down. Go away. Lady and myself have business. You don't leave, you'll be escorted out. But before you go to bed tonight, and if you're very lucky, only your kneecaps will be broken. By who? Please, Mr. Parker. I said by who? When I was very young and brave and foolish, my kneecaps were broken. The gentleman who broke them died some years later. He died very badly. But my knees still hurt. You're Michael's brother. Care who's it's okay, Mr. Farmer. Please, finish your lunch. I will call Delafont. You wanted to see me? Let's go outside. Michael said you were tough. Yes, Mr. Moretti? Poor Michael. I wonder if he knows he's dead. Still, one can't collaborate with the dead. We need the help of the living. Now, you'll collaborate with me, won't you, Miss Parker? You'll help me avenge my brother's death. You're a fair-minded person. Aren't you? You just never leave me again. Michael, I intend to be free of you. How is Joshua? Hans Christian Andersen. Born 1805 in the slums of Odense on the island of Fly, Denmark. Mr. Anderson did not admire his fairy tales. He dismissed them. He preferred dark plays and strange novels. Imagine. He never understood the impact of his tall tales. Died in an asylum in Copenhagen, 1875, a stark, raving maniac. Are you going to punish me for your brother's death? If I were going to do that, it would have happened a long time ago while I was still sick with hate. And you're no longer sick with hate. The hate grows, along with my business acumen. Are you in the same business Michael was? The legitimate part. Is there a legitimate part? All right, Mr. Moretti. You could have hurt me, and you haven't. What do you want? You owe us. My brother saved your son's life. He received very little for his efforts. Very little? When your brother tried to kill Adam Warner, the bullet intended for him decided on me. Because of that bullet, Mr. Moretti, I can't have any more children. That was your brother's legacy to me. Your kid's alive. Michael is dead. You owe us. If I don't pay? Look at that great and beautiful face. Imagine all of the beauty that he gave to children. All the magic. Still, the man was mad. Absolutely nutty as a fruitcake.
I can see why Michael loved you. My God, what can happen to a man? Mr. Morris, really, you, you must have given the boy some reason. He did try to kill himself. I... I don't know. I mean, there's nothing. William was extremely polite, very attentive. He was a perfect student. Not like some of the others. What others, Mr. Morris? The other students. Most of them didn't really want violin lessons. Their parents wanted it for them. They missed appointments. They didn't practice. Why did you take them? You know how few concerts the Westchester County Orchestra gives. I did better playing on cruise ships. At least there were tips. I never touched William Havermeyer. I never touched anyone. Excuse me, your tickets to Washington? Compliments of Hatcher, Foreman, Delafont. I think they've booked you at the Hayes Adams. So, it's beginning, huh? Only going to listen, take in a real Washington party. Whatever happens, you're on board. I would appreciate it if I could go home now. Of course. What I don't understand is why William would say something like that. He was always so polite. Isaac Stern is doing the Brahms Concerto tonight. It's on the radio. That's nice. I met Mr. Stern once. He was most cordial. Look. All we have is a mentally ill client. Morris did make a pass at the boy. Uh, it was a serious pass. The boy could not take it. He fell apart and tried to kill himself. Maybe. I just don't buy the motivation. Morris is a loner, granted, but he's a musician. Even musicians have friends. If we could just locate someone who knows him. Get character witnesses. Oh, I want more than a character witness. I, I don't know what I want. Sharon. Get me a list of all Morris's friends, relatives, acquaintances, anything. Thank you. Who? Jeremy, it's for you. Oh. Yes. Where? Oh, yeah. I know that place. I'll get there as soon as I can. Jeremy? Is it Catherine? What is it, Jeremy? about half an hour ago. Room 203. Thanks.
Isn't that decent? That's right. He told Margot at a dinner party the other night that without cocktail parties, which he profoundly despises, he wouldn't know half as much about what he's supposed to know. <sighs> Want another? Oh, this is fine, thank you. Cocktail hour is a splendid hour. I thought you and Miss Delafont wanted to see me privately. Well, with Margot's schedule and her strong wish to make a deal with you, this is her first opportunity for a private meeting. This? This. <laughs> Well, Believe me, Miss Parker, in Washington, 85% of business is conducted at cocktail parties or charity functions. So, here this evening, Margo gets a sparkling deduction for charitable entertainment, a chance to push the Smithsonian Building Fund, which she cares deeply about, and a chance to make a deal with you. Stay with her, Deke. Keep her laughing, drinking, and impressed. I'll be over in a moment. Is she always this? No, when she's angry, government buildings close, monuments cringe. But you adore her, don't you? One doesn't adore Margot Delafont. One worships her. Oh, there's Senator Ainsworth. Look at his little skip when he walks. It means he's swimming in his cups. <laughs> he looks absolutely sober to me. He isn't. Not that he couldn't hold the Senate spellbound for a half an hour. So how do you know he's drunk? Ainsworth and I were lovers two presidencies ago. He fell out of bed once too often. Mm. <laughs> My firm still represents him, the darling. Hello, Margot. You look marvelous. Hello, Erlen. Duke. Oh, I'm especially glad to see you. Oh, why especially? <laughs> well, you're new and gorgeous and newly powerful. <laughs> Jennifer, this is the Honorable Arlen Haber. He's our new Deputy Attorney you? General. Arlen, this is Jennifer Parker, soon to be a brilliant addition to our firm. Well, congratulations, Miss Parker. You can learn a great deal from Margot. Excuse me. Why did you tell him I was joining the firm? I really haven't said yes to anything. Well, we at the firm are eternally optimistic. What's wrong? See a ghost? Just a whore, Priscilla. Ooh, where? Come on, Mary Beth. Where? <laughs> Not fair. This place is full of whores. <laughs> Which one is yours? If you're worried about turning your life upside down, don't. You can stay in New York. We have a great team in New York. I spend a lot of time there. Well, I do have a staff. It's small granted. Bring in anyone you want. I don't practice your... our kind of law. There's only one way of practicing, and that's practicing well, successfully, and honestly. We're merely giving you a strong position to do more of what you do so well now. See, Jennifer, Margot never talked to me this way. Darling boy, we never solicited you. You came to us, remember? With a badly typed resume and scruffy shoes. You're an able lawyer. And there's always room for a handsome white bachelor who wears sweaters and kind of sprawls about. Hello, Margot. Well, hello, Mrs. Vice President. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. You look incredible, Mary Beth. <laughs> you make me feel like I've just made a miraculous recovery. I've not come out of intensive care, darling. I've merely come to your sweet little party. <laughs> You, uh, you know our Miss Parker? I believe so. Oh, There's my big catch. At the request of the Chief Assistant District Attorney, Mr. Bluestone, I convene this court for two o'clock sharp. 
Is anyone here from the district attorney's office who can open for the people? Are you it? Not really, Your Honor. I'm, <laughs> I'm assigned to this case to help. I mean, I'm new. Do you have any idea where Mr. Bluestone is? Good God, no. <laughs> Bluestone is much later. We can get a postponement. What's DeSalva doing here? The people apologize to the court, Your Honor. As well they might. This court will not tolerate the district attorney's office arriving at any time he chooses. Again, my apologies, Your Honor, but we've changed schedules. I intend to present the people's case against Mr. Glenn Morris myself, along with Mr. Bluestone. An egomaniac. He took the case from Bluestone. Your Honor, may I address the court? You may. Your Honor, since Mr. DeSalva has chosen to make an entrance... Your Honor, I object. Denied. Proceed, Ms. Parker. Since District Attorney DeSalva has chosen to parade himself into court late, I request you to instruct the jury to disregard any implication that the appearance of Mr. DeSalva is in any way significant as to the validity or certainty of the state's case. This court may not interfere with the district attorney's judgment, which includes taking over a case himself, and so will order no such instruction. Mr. DeSalva, please make your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. And I would challenge the heavens themselves to put into any language, let alone into legal terms, the horrors which have been visited on an innocent child. In waiving her right to cross-examine the victim, William Havermeyer, even the noted defense counsel has recognized the ultimate savagery of this case. Even if her action was intended for the press. Yes. Even so, the noted defense counsel cannot bring herself to further destroy that boy. Damn, he's good. He's still good. God in heaven, how about holding off a little? I do want to go to Rome, just once. What do you say? On my word of honor, dear Lord, I won't get a dime back from the excursion tickets if I cancel. Not a dime. So give it a thought. It. I've changed outfits three times, and if he doesn't like this one, I don't know. Miss Parker, Mr. Warner hasn't seen any of them. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm, I, oh, he's going to hate this one. Miss Parker, the vice president is coming to see Joshua. Oh, that's what he's been saying. He's been saying it. Oh, I still look terrible. You look lovely. Oh. <laughs> now, remember, Joshua doesn't know. Adam is merely a guest. Merely a guest.
Joshua, stop staring. Can't help it. He looks like a TV star. Are you a TV star? I'm afraid not, Joshua. But I have been on TV. How come you aren't staying for supper? Mommy's friends always stay for supper. I'll tell Mrs. Naki. She always has Joshua. Whoa! <laughs> You're strong. Oh, I love you. Hey, Mom, the nice man loves me. You're gonna have to tell him one day. No, you tell him, Adam. Joshua and I have never asked anything of you. So when the time's right, you tell him. And if it's never right, well, then that's okay, too. Joshua and I will. We'll get on fine. Miss Mackey is watching television in her room. It says you're probably already had your supper. Hey, pal. It's about time to get ready for bed. I'll come in in a little while. Mommy has terrific friends. Good night, Joshua. Adam, you know me pretty well. I think so. Well, I've had a feeling for a while now that... that I'm being watched or followed. I know that sounds silly. Jennifer, the Secret Service is charged with protecting the president, the vice president, and the families. Joshua? Around the clock. So the Secret Service knows? No, only the president. He made the assignment himself. He even took the chance that the Secret Service men might think that Joshua belonged to him. Good old Josh. Suddenly everyone's his father. Two months ago, no one was. Adam, what is it? I've been badgering you for weeks to let me see my son. I, I came here tonight convinced I could handle it, but I... It's all right, Adam. We have a wonderful boy. It's funny. I grew up in a big house. And now I reside in an even bigger house. But I don't live there. Jennifer, I guess I don't live anywhere. I gave you a son. I can't give you a home. We can't cross-examine Havemeyer. The jury thinks he's a golden boy. Yes, Sharon? Delafont is arriving in New York today and wants to meet with you. Okay, make the appointment. You're gonna move over to Delafont? I'm tilting. Because <laughs> DeSalva's murdering us on the Morris case? It's only one case. It's a rough one to lose. You can also lose at the Delafont firm. But with more style. Come on, we're running late. See you later, Sharon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, four o'clock. That's good. Taxi! Taxi! Jennifer! Anything wrong? What is it? We may have a break. Let's go, let's go. I can't make any money standing still here. Remember that musician friend of Mr. Morris's that you've been combing the city for? Well, he's back in town. This is his address. He'll wait for you. He says Glenn Morris plays a lot of wrong notes but wouldn't touch anybody. Get another cab and keep it going as long as you can. That judge is not going to let me fool around. Father Ryan said you were a genius. Be one. I'll be back in court as soon as I can. You people realize, of course, you destroyed my entire financial picture. Taxi! Taxi! With your schedule, I never thought you'd come to New York just to convince Jennifer Parker. The lady is a hell of a lot more independent than any of us reckon. 
I don't particularly like Jennifer Parker. So why are we trying? I said I don't like her. I didn't say the firm couldn't use her. Oh, darling, rub my neck. New York makes me tense. Right here. Your Honor, at this time, the counsel for the defense would like the court to recall William Havemeyer so that it might have an opportunity for cross-examination. I object, Your Honor. No. Your Honor, certain information has come to light that gives us no alternative other than to exercise our right to cross-examine Havemeyer. You have waived your right to cross-examine William Havemeyer. Your Honor, I do not enjoy the prospect of confronting a child who has already suffered too much, but I cannot stand by and have my client's life destroyed. Miss Parker, this court does not wish to impede Mr. Morris's right to a fair trial, but your request sorely tests the rules of evidence and court procedure. Thank you, Your Honor. However, given the special circumstances of this case and the possibilities of severe penalties to the defendant, this court is persuaded that the defense may cross-examine Mr. Habermeyer. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Exception. Noted. You understand, Miss Parker. I must caution you. You are being allowed to cross-examine Mr. Havermeyer on the condition of extreme caution. You will not be allowed to savagely maul this boy on this witness stand. And I want your questions germane, non-inflammatory, and brief. This court stands adjourned until Monday, 10 a.m. Attendance on Monday will be limited to officers of the court and the parents of Mr. Havermeyer. Understood? All rise. Court's adjourned. Wait till you read this. This reporter says he has it from unimpeachable sources that DeSalvo and I came to blows in the judges' chambers. Oh. If you're going to turn the public against you, you should take more lucrative cases. You're kind. Please, leave us alone. Uh, uh, no scenes in front of the boy, please. Oh, my father loved taking us to the park on Sundays. My brother Michael was always tumbling about, always disappearing. I hung around with my dad. He liked to read to me. He admired respect. My mother leaned toward Michael. My mother died without even knowing Michael had preceded her. We couldn't tell her. She had too much pain as it was. You know what she said to me before she died? She touched my cheek. And she said, you're a good boy. Look after your brother. He needs you. You get on with your mother? It's a very important thing. My mother left home when I was less than a year old. She may be dead. One day, everything's family. The next, everything's scattered. So, Michael's gone. That leaves me. That leaves you. That leaves us. Mr. Moretti, I'm only talking to you because I don't want a scene. Now, what do you want? An ongoing relationship. I wish to continue the Parker Moretti family relationship. That's absurd. Already bought and paid for in blood. My brother's blood, not Adam Warner's. You see, you're one of us. Your son is one of us. Gabish. Hi. Hey. You coming home with us 
for supper? Joshua. Want to see my cars? I have lots of cars. No, Joshua. Cars? Young man, you're talking to one super car freak. Wait till you see my new Model X03. It can do anything. What's your name? Jim. Jim Moretti. Let's see what you've got here. Mommy just got me these ones. Here's my Maserati. Maserati? You mean a Maserati? Here is my Porsche. You mean a Porsche, don't you? Yeah. Whatever. What's this one? I like this one right here. What's that? Mommy found it. Joshua. It's time to go home. You coming home for supper? No, Joshua. He's not coming home. And neither will I. Come on, you don't go home, I won't be able to come and visit you. And I want to see the rest of your cars. Mm, okay? okay. Come on, Mrs. Maggie. I'll collect the cars. Come on, Mr. Moretti. Your son's very charming. Yes, Mr. Moretti, he is charming. I don't have to be, you understand? I don't have to be charming. I had to know. Oh, what? What Michael felt when he kissed you. I had to know. My brother didn't have a chance, did he? He had him crawling on command, barking for scratch. Not this Moretti. Not this brother. Say you love me. Say it. I want you, Michael. Tell me you love me. Want. Tell me. Want. Tell me. Is it possible that no crime took place at all? That there was no attempt on Mr. Morris's part? He wanted to grab me. I got scared. I ran around the room. He kept following me. Playing the violin means a great deal to you, doesn't it, William? It means everything. Did Mr. Morris ever discuss your future as a violinist? I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, William. Did Mr. Morris ever discuss the limitations of your talent? Your Honor, William's future as a violinist is totally irrelevant. It's absolutely your Honor, immaterial. The talent of William Habermeyer as understood by Glenn Morris and discussed with colleagues of Glenn Morris, not yet brought out in this trial, is the very essence... Miss Parker, I am not going to allow this line of questioning. I find it aimlessly cruel. Your Honor, William Havemeyer's perception of his talent was at one time exaggerated and full of high hopes. Glenn Morris did not understand the full implication of Ms. those Parker, hopes. Miss Parker, I will not warn you again. I didn't mean to damage anyone. I didn't. You didn't mean to do what? Your Honor! Sit down, Mr. DeSalva. Go on, Miss Parker. William, did Mr. Morris ever do anything to you? Ma'am, Mr. Morris never touched me. He said I would never be a great violinist. He said... He would never have taken me if he knew how much I wanted to be a great violinist. He said that it was all right to teach ordinary boys, but it was a sin to encourage ordinary boys to thinking they were, were unique. 
I wanted to punish Mr. Morris. Sorry, Mr. Morris. It's not your fault. You're a good teacher. I'm sorry. It's all right, William. I should have understood. I'm simply not equipped to deal with children who want to be great. Mr. DeSalva, Miss Parker. Would you two come to the bench? Mr. DeSalva, I think what we have here is a tragedy, not a crime. Tell me the truth, Counselor. Weren't you pleased to tell Catherine we're joining Hatcher, Foreman, and Delafont? I haven't told her yet. You haven't? It's been away. How far away? Far. Ah, oh, Jeremy. It's okay, Jennifer. We got a deal, remember? You don't pry, and I show up. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Jeremy. Where are you going? Gonna let an old maid go home to television in early bedtime? You. You big fraud. Gone home to a sparkling kid in a nifty apartment. My sparkling kid will give me a sloppy kiss, ask me to look at his new cars, and then totally ignore me until he goes to bed. Then I get another sloppy kiss, and then I love you, Mommy, and the view of his delicious behind as he seriously begins his eight hours. That sounds great. Buy you a drink? OK. Cheers, friend. To all the nice folks who wait with taste. How about your plans tonight? Well, you really want to know? Sure. Well, I have this one here, maybe one more closer to home. And then I'll have a few moments of grace while I fumble for my keys. Then a final reprieve looking for the lamp. See, I'm all right in the dark for a time. So there I am, finally home. Uh, oh, yes. There's Catherine's uh, slipper. The blue one, still in the middle of the floor. It's been there since she left. Just one blue slipper on the floor. And I stare at it. I don't pick it up. Pick it up because uh, as long as it stays there, Catherine hasn't left. Go on, Jeremy. Please. So, there I am. Two drinks starting to fade. And blue slipper getting bigger. Your apartment getting smaller. <laughs> then what, Jeremy? I cry. Yeah. I cry. I cry for Catherine. My uh, tiny wounded Madonna who loves me. And uh, every other man in the world. I cry for the smell of her and sounds of her. I cry for every moment that she ever graced my life. And the phone rings. Oh, your heart flops all over your soul. You go racing to the phone, rehearsing what you're going to say. Only takes seconds to rehearse. Uh, Hello, Catherine. Uh, sure, I'm OK. How are you? Well, that's great. Really great. Sure. Come over anytime. All your stuff is here. I saved your blue slipper for you. Yes, I did. And before you get to the phone, you have time to do another scenario. Hello, Catherine. Please come home. 
Hey, Catherine, come on home. Save a life. Won't take long. A hug, a kiss, just a visit. So now you finally get to the phone. Hello. Who was it, Jeremy? Oh, it doesn't matter. Not Catherine. And you, Counselor? I've told you most of it. I know there's someone. Ever since my gentleman, he was never my gentleman. I just hang around as if someone ordered me to stay on ice, to wait in the car, to do nothing that could possibly interfere with safety. Now, there's the career. And my blessed son. But me, I just hang around, waiting. You know who ordered you to stay still? Of course. Me. So, here we are, Counselor. Two pleasant enough, bright enough people waiting. I stay home and wait for Catherine. You wait for something to happen. But how we fool them. How we fool them. But it sure makes for long nights, doesn't it? It sure does. Ryan at a coronary. How bad? I think pretty bad. He's in hospital. They're doing everything. Mrs. Mackey, please, start packing for me. Enough of anything for a week. Mommy, is Father Ryan going to die? Not with us there. He won't dare. Tell him to paint with his right and then jab. I've been telling that to him for years. Come on, come on. Mix it up. Come on, paint with your right, damn it. To the body, to the body. Then to the head. Come on, move it. What do you want to do with him, Mr. Moretti? Shoot him. Something, I don't care. Anything. I saw you visiting with Parker and your kid last Sunday. How much did you see? What I saw was none of my business. The kid was safe. Parker's leaving for Rome. A friend of hers is sick. She's taking the kid with her. They go, I go. Maybe I'll buy you a drink. You have business in Rome? Everyone has business in Rome. Business? No crackling wit. Cabiche. Don't muscle me, Sonny. How often does Warner see Parker? Couldn't say. I look after the boy. How often? A 
couple of times. I look after the boy. That's what I get paid for. And to keep us informed. So consider yourself informed. You on their plane to Rome? Wherever the boy is. All roads lead to Rome. You're breathing hard, friend. How's that? You're drooling all over that lady. You're drool. But I ain't slipping in it. That's not the deal. You open your sick mouth about me and Jennifer Parker again, you work for nobody. Nobody. If you're lucky and religious, we'll give you Korean sunglasses to hawk in South Jersey. Gabish. Gabish. The pronunciation stinks. Look, Mommy, look. We'll look later, Joshua. Plenty of time for sightseeing. I'll save it for Father Ryan. I'll look at it, but I'll save it. Is he all right, Miss Parker? The doctor will be here in a few minutes. He will answer all your questions. Please, please don't let anything happen to Father Ryan. He's terrific. Yes, he is. to give Father Ryan my heart. I'm young. He could live forever and ever. Oh, sweetheart. It's gonna be okay. I promise you. Now, don't let him do everything he wants. I want him to see Rome from a Rome. Don't worry. Melissa and I already made a deal. <laughs> It will be fine, Signora Parker. We have much to learn from each other. Signora Parker? Yes. You have a long distance phone call. You may take it on the house phone. Thank you. Have a good time. Not too long. How come I can't come see Father Ryan? Tomorrow, sweetheart. I promise. This is Signora Parker. You have a call for me? It was very serious, Jeremy, but he's going to make it. Well, should I fly over? I don't think so. Actually, the doctor feels he'll do better at home. Ryan loves Rome, but he's such a New Yorker. He'll be more relaxed with his friends than with a lot of strange clergy, as he calls them. He says they keep looking at him as if he's being punished. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Jennifer, if it were meant to happen, I'm glad it happened in Rome. <sighs> you know how much you see as you fall? In just a splash of time, I could see the columns of St. Peter's looking down at me, annoyed, yet very concerned. I saw sweet nuns and stern priests bending over me. I could swear one my senior was saying, I'll bet the yank smoked. <laughs> Have you started smoking again? Absolutely not. By uh, hand of God. Damn it, Francis. You gave us such a scare. When you get home, you're going on a health program. Understand? Understood. <clears throat> Are you uh, going to stay on in Rome? Just for a few days. Joshua may not get back here for years. I, I want him to see as much as he can. Oh, Joshua. I'd give a lot to hang around and see him grow up. You will. That'd be nice. 
to watch that strange, elusive boy grow all the way to the sky. Jennifer, how much do you think the boy knows? I really know. Sometimes I think nothing. Then some days he stares at me, and I think he's trying to say, hang on, Mom. Give me a chance to grow up. I'll, I'll fix it all up. No one can fix it all up except you. And his father. You get with it, Jennifer. Don't wait for the past to catch up. If you do, you won't recognize it. Hey! Piano! Madonna che macchina, signore, è favolosa. Chi ti credi di essere? Non è una macchina, è eh? un sogno questo. Ah, idiota. Hi, Mr. Reddy. Hey, what a car. What a great car. I have one just like it. You just go, mmm. Mine goes, mmm, when they drive it through the living room. I just bought it. It hasn't started talking yet, Joshua. How are you doing? You're looking good. Look at those lines. Look at that hood. Could you drive me around the block just once? No, he can't, Joshua. Please, Mr. Moretti. This car is so great. Shouldn't those sorters of stick together? I'd take you for a spin, Mr. Moretti, if my car were here. I bet you would. Boy, to go home and tell the kids it'd be worth everything, Mr. Moretti. Please. I'm afraid not, Joshua. Oh, I'd pay you anything. How much? How much we got, Alyssa? Oh, this is Alyssa. She looks after me. When I get home, I'll bust my Christmas bank. Anything you want. Just a little spin. OK, but just a little one. Yeah! I can't allow this, sir. Signora, give the boy a break. We won't be long. Mr. Moretti. We can't allow this. Family, the kid's safer with me than anyone. What if they find out? No one will find out. Take a walk. Get fitted for a suit. Believe me, you can afford it. That's your seatbelt. <laughs> Take off. Hey, che razza di macchina è questa? Eh? Forse ce la fai più presto a piedi, no? What the man say? Nothing, Josh. He's just making fun of me. trying, Joshua. T'aspettavo. Che fa? Non c'è motore? What do you say? It's all right, Joshua. He has no manners. Ah, Americano. American. You will get old waiting in that uh, hip bambino. <laughs> Come on over and ride in a real car, eh? Ti piace scherzare? Allora, vieni. I mortacci tua. Andiamo. Andiamo, ragazzi.
notre pays, quelle que soit notre politique. Nous nous sommes réunis There's a call for you, Mr. Vice President. It seems to be very important. Et malgré les différences qui nous séparent en ce qui concerne la route qu'il faut prendre vers une solution efficace, nous partageons tous toujours le même but. Hello? Jennifer. Oh, God. God, where is he? as long as it takes to get from Brussels to Rome. as soon as I could. 